Hey guys, it's JoJo here today on Roblox, we are playing some more Pokemon Brick Bronze. As you can see on screen right now, today I'm going to show you how to, that I specifically breed for really good IVs on my Pokemon. As you can see on my PvP teams, most of my Pokemon have a really good IVs, except from like a few shinies or just a few hidden abilities, which was before a specific item was released from the arcade, which I'll get on in the future of this video. Uh, this video is going to be split into two parts, or two halves I should say, so the first part is going to be showing you, uh, I'm going to be telling you I'm trying to explain all the items and how you can read for good IVs and the second half of the video will be explained on how you can chain read every single egg group so you can so after you've done all that chain reading you can pretty much it's gonna be a lot easier once you've done that or you can just or which I specifically don't do that but I probably should because it is a lot quicker to chain reads every single egg group to get, just get them out of the way anyway some few items really quickly I need to get into first just to um, that can be benefit you and make this a little bit quicker and a less tedious, but um, really quickly If you don't really understand the concept of EV training or how to EV train, which um, is pretty simple to be honest But if you don't understand that there's a very good chance that you may not understand how to how uh, or grasp and con get the concept of IV or breeding for good IVs you know, because it is pretty elaborate there's a lot of things that can go into it but once you get the hang of it it's pretty easy so if you are struggling and you've watched the entire of the video and you're still struggling make sure to leave a comment down below i'll try and go through as many comments as i can and try and answer each and every single one of them and if you also know how to really breed for really good ivs make sure to go help people down in the comments down below as it makes my life a little bit easier but if this video helps you make sure to leave a like and let me know as well if there's any other things in the future allow me to go make videos on like Egg moves, which I'll probably do a, a video on that in the future. Not sure when, so just keep a lookout for that. But anyway, some of the items that can help breed in, obviously, um, are... I'm using my phone, if you look, wonder I'm looking down first, because I've just got it all in my phone, so it's a little bit easier. But anyway, uh, first thing, actually, is that there's two abilities which definitely help with breeding in general, not just for breeding for IVs. These are Flame Body and Magma Armor. For ex an example of a Pokemon that can get them, which you can get really alone in the game, is actually in the Volcano. You actually, just go pick yourself up a Magma, um, and that'll have Flame Body, as you can see the ability is Flame Body. You have this in the first party slot, uh, not the second, the, the first, it has to be in the first, I believe. Um, any eggs in your party with the first slot party member um, with flame body or magma armor, obviously, will cut down the process of running around the circles to hatch your egg by 50%. 50 so it's pretty much just half in the amount of time that you need to run around in circles to hatch your egg. So I definitely recommend this if you haven't already done it. So make sure to do it. After that, we have Everstones. Everstones are used to pass down natures of Pokemon. For example, um, you can get them from the underwater mining vessel or the UMV. You can get batteries by just buying them or you can just go to Lotto every few days. I believe it's like on a, right now I think it's on a three day cycle, although it might change in the future. But you can go over there and just hopefully get a UMV battery. But you only really need one of them. But I would suggest trying to get some more. But if I scroll up really quickly, um, actually, where do I have mine? Uh, right here, I only have 90 left. I keep accidentally deleting them. I used to have like 50, so unfortunate. But Everstones are really good. For example, if um, if you're wondering when I did my Sneasel giveaway, all of these Sneasels had a Jolly Nature, which is plus speed minus special attack, since Weavall doesn't need special attack and they want speed. Uh, mainly it's because I use an Everstone. Give the Everstone to the Pokemon of the parent that has the nature that you want. So, for example, if. if um, I'll just use two Trico. So here's a Trico that has a timid nature, and then here's a Trico that has a quiet nature. Quiet nature, not really good. Actually, t timid nature is a pretty good one for a special attack in Sceptile, so I'll use this as the male parent, and I'll give it the Everstone, and then if I'm using this as the parent in the daycare with the Everstone attached to it, every single Pokemon that will be hatched as this with this as a parent will also have the timid nature although if you have i don't know let me just say this let's just say it's a female even though it is a male so just say just say it's a female if we also give this one the everstone and give both of them the everstone i believe it'd be a 50 50 chance so obviously don't give the everstone to the parent for the nature that you don't want only just use one of the parents so make sure that i would suggest going for the natures before you start going for good ivs since it's a lot easier and plus if you do the IV, I guess, breeding first, later on the line when you start going for natures, you might lose some of these IVs during the process. So I would definitely suggest going for natures before this entire process of going for IVs. 
Okay, so now we've talked about the natures and like specifically how to get lemons. It's very simple, so I'd definitely suggest going for lemons because if you get bad nature, obviously is gonna decrease your that specific stat by 10% or then increase the one by 10% um, if it's getting increased or decreased either way. But um, now we're gonna be talking about the other, I guess two specific items there are Destiny, Destiny Bond, no, Destiny Not, and the power items such as Power Weight, Power Bracer, Power Anklet, Power Belt, Power Lens, and Power Band, which all do different stuff. You can find all these items in the Arcade. I believe the Destiny Knot is 7,000 tickets, and I believe each individual power item is 1,500 tickets. So, since there's six of them, it'll cost 9,000 tickets to get all of them, or 16,000 tickets to get every single one of these items. I would suggest getting them if you're pretty new to breeding. It kind of speeds up a little bit. I don't specifically use them, although I did buy them recently just for this video, so I'm probably going to use them now. Um, plus, they're pretty new to the game. Uh, the Destiny Knot is a big, big must if you want to get really good IVs. I'll get into that in a second, but um, power items can also be used to EV train. So it's like a Macho Brace. If you give a Pokemon, if you give the Macho Brace to a Pokemon, it will get double EVs. For as these power items, if you give them a specific one, for example, the power weight will give down HP. So instead of giving you double double HP, I believe it gives you four EVs in HP or eight, depending on which generation Brick Bronze is copying, I believe, which um, I believe it's four though. So I'm not 100% sure because I haven't used them to EV train, but for this video, using them to IV train, since you can use them for both of them. So then, I'll use the Destiny Knot. Uh, I'll explain the Destiny Knot first, since um, we're in the PC, and then I'll talk about the power items and how they specifically work for bleeding for IV. So anyway, so if you don't know, um, the parents of the Pokemon, which actually I have two screenshots I'm going to use for this video, whereas I'll try and put them up on screen, so the male parent will be on the left, and then the female parent will be on the right in the bottom of the screen. So also pay attention to those really quickly, just to make sure that you guys know these are the correct ones. So these, this is the male one, and then this is the female tree code that I use. So you can see they're both holding a different power item, which I'll get into that in a second, but these are the both parents, which, like I said, is there. So then, let's talk about that. So, as you can see, not the best, but one, well, the male one's okay, I guess, for, like, a special attacker slash mixed attacker, I guess, if you really wanted it to be, but, um, as you can see, I want to use this one because they both have pretty different IVs, so it's very diff easy to tell. Except from the special defense, they both have actually they both have the same special defense at 22. But then, I put them into the deck here and I bred four, so not a very large number of Pokemon. I wanted to go to do four, just like a quick example. So I put both of the parents into the deck here with no items each. Um, which obviously means I'm gonna get random natures, which obviously you don't want. I would suggest putting Everstones on first, but um, the, so first we got three Pokemon, we've bred four Pokemon with no items on. So we'll just quickly, quickly look at those and I'll try and explain as we go along. As you see, random nature, which is okay just for this explanation, but as you can see here, we have IVs. Now, if you quickly look at them, you can then probably see that there are a few similar stats to the parents, and you won't probably going to wonder how is that possible if you didn't give them any items. Well, actually, Pokemon breeding mechanics work as um, the parents will always pass down three guaranteed IVs. So, for example, from this Pokemon, we can see that the HP was passed down from the male, um, the attack was actually passed down from the male as well, and then the speed was passed down from the female. So obviously we didn't get any 30 ones, so that means obviously the more 30 ones you have, the better chances that you have of being able to pass down those 30 one stats, which we'll also begin to learn in a second. Which, um, as you can see, the other three stats are completely random, and none of them go towards any of the parents, as like, none of them are the same, which is how Pokemon Breeding works. So, obviously, like I said, the more 31 IVs you have, which is the max the highest IVs you can have, the better chance of, of you getting the best IVs that you possibly can. So that is the first one. I'm going to quickly show you all the other ones that we had with no items completely. This is the second, as you can see, we managed to get the 31 speed from the male. We managed to get the 22 defense from actually any of them, since they both have 22 special defense. And it looks like we managed to take the... Actually, what do we take for the last one? The special attack from the female, and the other three are completely random, which got pretty unfortunate, to be honest. We got pretty bad odds, to be honest, like four and four, that's very, very bad. But uh, honestly, that's that. Onto the third one, just to quickly show you again. We have fit one from the male, 
22 special defense from both of the parents or any of the parents as they can pick between both of them. Uh, 7 special attack is from non, 11 defense is from the female, 26 attack from non and then HP at 8 from, from none of them. So obviously you can see that speed, special defense and the defense was chosen from the parents whereas the other three were random. Got pretty unlucky on the HP and special attack. But the attack was pretty good, 26, anything above 25 I like, but also since the Destiny Knot is out, then I'd suggest going for the third ones every single time. And then quickly for the fourth one, just to show you how, again, that it's always going to pass down free guarantee that we have 28 speed from the female, 31 special defense from, actually no, that's actually a random one, that's actually really lucky that we actually got that. We have uh, 11 special attack from the female, defense at 2 is from non alone, so pretty unlucky for that one. 20 speed physical attack from the male and then 10 HP from the male as well so as you can see actually this one we have 28 um oh, we have speed special attack attack and HP which could potentially be from either of the parents the reason why there's four instead of three is because three of them was passed down and then the fourth one was just ran complete random and we managed to get lucky and it just happened so so happened to be the same stat as the one of the parents so that's the reason. It didn't pass down 4, it just passed down 3, and we got pretty luck on the 4th one. So that is it for no items. Now we'll go into the Pokemon that I use with the Destiny Knot, and we'll see the difference and why I would definitely recommend using it if you already haven't. So this is, so that, so as you can see, the, that line was for no items. This line of 4 is with the Destiny Knot. I'm trying to make this video as short as possible. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how long it's going to be, so I'll try and make it as quickly as possible. But this is the first one, obviously, in the line. So as you can see, we have 26 HP from none of them. 6 attack from the female. 28 defense from the male. We have special attack from uh, on 11 from the female. 22 special defense could be from any of them, since they both have the same special defense. And 28 speed from the female. As you can already see... That's five stats we passed down rather than three. So obviously that's a lot better. As we can as you can see, now we can get really, really good IVs as long as we have a lot of 31 I stats, obviously. So I'll quickly go along all of these just so you can quickly see that it will always pass down five guarantees. So this one uh, looks like 11 speed is not, not from any of them, so that means we can safely assume the other five will be taken from the parents. So 10 HP is from the male, six attack is from the female, 11 defense is from the female, 31 special attack is from the male, 22 special defense could be from either of them. Get on to the third one, we have 11 HP, not from any of them, so now we can safely assume that the bomb 5 will be from the parents. 6 attack, female, uh, 28 defense, male, 31 special attack, male, 22 special defense, it could be from either, and 31 from the male. So as you can see, this one looks like they mostly pulled from the male it looks like, as we got 31 speeds from the male, special attack from the male, and then defense from the male. The special defense could also be from the male, although like I said, we have uh, both of them, both of the parents have the same special defense. So it's not, not more or less, it's not going to take three from one parent and always two from the other. It'll always take five from either of them. So it could take five from the male and then five from the female. It just, it just a random odds. And then I believe for the last one, um, again, we have 10 HP, male, 6 attack, female, the defense is from the female, special attack is from the female, special defense, again, from either of them, and the speed is at 14, which is not from any of them, so obviously, that's that, so that's the Destiny Knot, that's how the Destiny Knot works, so, obviously, the better IVs that you have on the both of the parents means that you'll always try and pass down good IVs. I wouldn't recommend using the Destiny Knot until you have around, like, 4 or five or if you already have this six times 31 iv pokemon that's the only time i would really recommend using the destiny not otherwise if you only have like three or below 31 guaranteed then you're going to pass down a lot of trash ivs so obviously i wouldn't recommend that and also like i said for the power items now i don't need my phone really anymore uh, for the power items is a little bit different so the power items for example i gave the power lens to the male parents which um the power lens is for the special attack and I gave the female the power bracer, which is for the physical attack. So, also again, we're using the same parents for this. So, we quickly, can go to this one. So this is the first one that we got from, and um, both of them hold, held these items at the same time. So, as you can see, the this one got the same attack as the female, and the same special attack 
as the male. However, this is really random. So how power items work out quickly to tell you right now is that if you, I would only suggest giving only one of them works on one of the parents. I give both. I give both of the parents one of these items to see how it works initially, because Rig Bronze sometimes has different features to other Pokemon games. However, uh, giving two power items to both of the parents does not work. I would only suggest giving one of them to one parent. Um, so how it works. Now that's mostly for the highest stat that you always want to pass down. For example, if you have a sweeper with good IVs and speeds, I would suggest giving it giving it a power item that will always pass down the speeds. Or in this case, my male uh, Trico always had 31 in special attack, and I always want to pass down the special attack, so that means I would give it this. So we've got six attack, again, like I said, from the female. So that's how power items work. I'll always pass down one, and then since I didn't have a destiny knot on them, I'll just pass down another random two, which some, which this one passed on the six attack, randomly gave me the special attack from the male, and then special defense from, again from either of them, and then the other three are completely random. Um, however, because I gave them both it, I believe it only took from the female, unless it's a 50-50% chance, I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like it, from the fall that I got, it always took the female parent's physical attack, since that was the... Um, power item that I gave it for the power lens, no, the power bracer, which is for the physical attack. As you can see, they all have six attacks, so I don't really need to show you the other stats set from the attack. So you can see attack. Um, this one actually is pretty good, managed to get like three fate ones, and HP actually wasn't one in one of the parents at all, so got really lucky with that. Um, and then for, obviously for the last one, we have six again in the physical attack, and then one defense actually got a lucky again because that's completely random so that's how the power items work so for example if you have a sweeper for example it's, i would suggest using them definitely for sweeper pokemon for tanky pokemon tanky pokemon really want like hp defense special defense and then maybe a attack or special attack so that means that there's already like four stats that it needs whereas sweepers mainly only need speeds and attack or special attack so that means they only really need two the rest of the stats are just like kind of there just to like help it maybe survive one hit if it's got good good enough iv so for a sweeper i would suggest giving it to the best iv that i got especially 30 ones if you have for example i use tricos again my male trico obviously has 31 in speed and special attack so let's just say that the female for example has zero speeds but 31 special attack as well because they both have 31 special attack i wouldn't recommend giving it to the special attack i would suggest giving it to the speed instead on the male since it has 31 guaranteed speeds so that means the off speed when i get an egg and i'll breed a trico that means that egg will always have me a 31 speeds and then there's already a good chance that if i do get the special attack in uh passed down that it will always be 31 since both of the parents are 31. That's how I would suggest using the power items. But um, yeah, I believe that is it for the items. Um, and I guess I'll now I'll get onto the chain breeding methods. Okay, now for the second half of this video. So then, in the previous half, I talked about pretty much just like items and what items are beneficial for you to get. And I would definitely suggest getting them if you're offered already. Plus the two abilities, definitely just get one. Also, they don't stack. You only need one in the first part. Here. But uh, now we're going to go on to chain breeding to be able to chain breed Pokemon from specific egg groups and then be able to get ev one of every single Pokemon from every single egg group and then you can pretty much breed for good IVs on every single Pokemon. So if you don't know, there are 15 different egg groups. Two of them aren't necessary at all. One of them, one of them is Ditto, which just consists of Ditto, obviously. So Ditto isn't in their group because they can breed with anything. And the problem is that getting a good IV Ditto is very very rare um, alongside of that the other one that we don't need is the undiscovered one this is pretty much for legendaries mythicals and pokemon that just can't breed except from manaphy i'm not sure why they decided to manaphy but manaphy is in the fairy and water one but it only can breed with ditto so don't get confused about that egg group um, also for some reason in needle queen and needle queen's pre-evolution pre um, is in the Undiscovered one, which means Nido Queen and I think it's Nido Rena or Nido Rhino. I don't remember exactly which one, but the female version of that can't breed. Although the Nido Ran female, which is the first evolution, can breed. I don't know why that's the case. Go complain to Game Freak or Nintendo or whoever you want about making Pokemon. 
for making that decision, but that's just weird, I know. But all of that, that means that we have 13 egg groups that we can go and conquer. So then, I don't know why I keep saying conquer either, but um, pretty much those 13 egg groups we can go down. But if you don't know, in Pokemon Brick Bronze, we have four Pokemon in the wild that aren't legendary or mythical that we can use to breed that will get three times 31 guaranteed IVs. Now these Pokemon are Alekid, Magby, um, uh, I think Alekid can be found in the sewers, Magby can be found in the volcano, um, which I'm, I'll talk about the other two in a second, but the first two, like I said, Alekid and Magby, which like I said, um, just to quickly prove this to you that they'll get three times 31 guaranteed IVs, is the magma, that, the magma that I use. I actually call this in the volcano just used for breeding for the ability. It has 31 in HP, attack, and special defense. Like I said, these are these are only guaranteed. 30, these are only the guaranteed IVs if they're caught in the wild. If you catch the guaranteed ones in the wild and then use them to breed, it won't be guaranteed three times 31 since it'll be using the parents, not the actual catching of them in the, in the wild. The wild being them in the Catch them in the wild and gives them the three times fair one guaranteed IVs. Whereas if you're breeding them, you're just pretty much taking three guaranteed IVs from the parents that aren't exactly going to be fair one every time. It might take the two, the ten, and the twenty from the other star. So just try not to get confused with that because that could just get confusing. But the reason why we aren't going to be using the Magbe or the Alekids, even though I did bring them up, because they're just the two, other two guaranteed Pokemon, is because they aren't needed. Those two are only in the human-like egg group, which if you don't know, like I said, there are 13. There are Field, Human-like, Dragon, Water 1, Water 2, Water 3, Monster, I'm not sure if I said Dragon, but Dragon, Amorphous, or Amorphous, Grass, Flying, Fairy, Mineral, and Bug. Those are the 13 egg groups. I'm not sure if I missed one, but I don't think I did. Those are the 13 egg groups that are all different. Obviously, different Pokemon can be in two different egg groups, which is why we don't need Magby or Alekids, um, because they're only in one. They're both in the human one, whereas the other two Pokemon that have, can have three times 31 guaranteed IVs. Actually, in this PC box, we have our Tokitik and our Luca Rylu, which sh you should evolve into a Lucario, because baby Pokemon cannot breed. This, inv this includes Alekid, Magby, Rylu, and Togepi. Those are four baby Pokemon that cannot breed until you evolve them into Togetic or Lucario, which we're only going to be using these two to start chain breeding. So in the first part of the video, I didn't talk about how to specifically start off by getting good IVs. It's because I wanted to just use to specifically use this chain. Since you, if you use this chain, you can get one of every single egg group Pokemon and then you'll be set. It is going to take you a long time, like, however. But it's better for the long run if you are going to want to breed for a lot of Pokemon. And then you can do it from different other egg groups. So then, what we want to do is that, like I said, since these two Pokemon can get 3 times 31, that you can either go catch one of them and then be set. Although these two need to be male. I would emphasize that. You, they need to be male for you to start this chain breeding. Um... But like I said, uh, I'll quickly show you the guaranteed 31 IV. So this is one I just got from trade, but it was caught in the wild. It has 31 in speed, special defense, and physical attack, and pretty good on the other one. So just because it says 3 times 31 guaranteed, it doesn't mean you can't get more than 3 31s. So you can get your 3 times 31 guaranteed, and the other 3 stats could roll another 31, which I'll quickly show you with my Tokitik. So this is actually a Tokitik that I got myself from the fossilized eggs. So as you can see, I got 4 times 31s and almost another one which is on 28 for the defenses. So that's actually a really, really good one. And actually, I do use this one for breeding a lot for the Pokemon that I can breed with it since Togetic is in the Fairy and Flying Egg Group. That's the typing, but that's, that's not how egg groups work. It's just how it happens as a coincidence for the typings and the same egg groups. But anyway, um, so like, like I said, you could either go... And catch one of them as a male, but make, remember, like I said, make sure these two are male. These two need to be male. These make sure people understand that because people will be there. But why? They need to, why can't they be female? No, male. <laughs> they need to be male. I'll quickly get into that shortly. But uh, once you've got a male one, um, you could go and catch yourself a female version or trade for them. But remember, if you are trading for them, if, make sure that you look at their stats. If you don't have the IV checker, 
I would definitely suggest getting that first because it's going to be pretty much impossible for you to get good IVs without that to be able to see the, if you can't see the IVs it's pretty much impossible to breach for IVs I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video but I completely forgot that was a game pass for it but if you only get a 3 times 31 we pretty much want to try and get ourselves a 5 or a 6 times 31 parent so then what we want to do is that if you don't want to go and catch yourself multiple Rylus or multiple fossilized eggs for Tokopies only, only to do is get two, get one male and one female and just start breeding them with no items on them whatsoever except from one power item on one of the parents. So for example on the Tokitik I have HP. So let's say I had another female Tokitik, uh, this, since this one is male, this male one has 31 HP, attack, defense, special attack and special defense. Let's say I got the exact same IVs are very very similar like I got HP attack and speed on the female one. Give the female one the power item for the speed one since your male doesn't have speeds even give that one or give it to like the special defense special attack or defense because also like I said we, we, on the female one we have the one in HP attack and speed so we can either give it the female one the speed power item or the male one, the special defense or the special attack one, since the female doesn't have the other one. But since they both have HP and attack as fate ones, we don't need to give any of them the power item, since there's already a very, very good chance that we'll already get a fate one from either of those stats. So then you just want to worry about the other stats. And every time you get a better Pokemon that you bred, so let's say, let's just say that you had um, the male, the, the male Togepi is this one. The female Togepi only has, like I said. 3 fate ones in HP, Attack and Speed, but only, let's just say the Defense, Special Attack and Special Defense were 0. If we get a fate one Speed, Attack, HP as the female parent, but then we bred another female Togepi, and it had fate one in HP, Attack, Speed, and then Special Defense, swap it out with the female parent that you're already using, because it has better IVs. You want to make sure that you're always constantly swapping out the parents with the better Pokemon with better IVs, since they'll always pass down and have better odds of getting new Pokemon. But you want to keep pro doing this process, like which like I said, is going to take you a long time. So it may take you 100 eggs, it may take you 250. If it's taking you more than 250, you're getting pretty unlucky, but just keep up, keep up at it, and it's definitely worth it in the long run, like I said. But anyway, once you've done that, you've got to get yourself a 5x31 or a 6x31 if you're pretty lucky. Then you are done with the Tokitik and the Lucario, and then you can start moving on to the Chain Breeding. So once you've done that for both of them, I'd definitely suggest using it for both of them, then we can start on the Chain Breeding for every single other Pokemon. So then what we we'll do is we're going to start off with the, the male Lucario. So then I'm going to pop on the screen right now a list of Pokemon that you want to go and catch in the wilds, and these Pokemon need to be female. So then you want, you want to go catch yourselves an Ekans, a Gyarados, a Raihan, a Wooper, a Shellos, a Cacnea, a Snowruns, a Dwebble, and an Archon, which is a fossil Pokemon, which may take you a few tries, but if you want, if you get one fossil, you can so actually soft reset for them. So save before you use a fossil, use it if it's a male, rejoin the game without saving, and then use it again, and that's how you get the soft reset for all the fossils. But once you've got all of these Pokemon female, you can then use them to breed with these two male Pokemon, which is Togetic and Lucario. So then, so that's what Lucario set, since there's a little bit more in there. So then, since Lucario's in the field and human-like egg group, we can then go ahead and breed it with all the Pokemon in those egg groups. So then, we're going to breed the male Lucario with good IVs, with an Ekans. Um, I would also suggest, while you're catching these female Pokemon, to make sure that they might have like maybe at least 1 times 31 If not, it doesn't matter, it's just going to take you a lot longer. But like I said previously, to get good IVs on the Lucario and the Togetic, you're going to have to breed a lot. You're going to have to do that whole process again to make sure that you get a good Ekans. So then what you want to do, breed a male Lucario with a female Ekans. Once you've done this, like I said, keep, swap keep swapping out the Ekans with another female Ekans every time you get a better one to make sure that you can get it yourself eventually. A male Ekans with very good IVs. Once you've done this, you have yourself a look good at Lucario, which is good for field and human-like. And you have an Ekans, which is also good for field and dragon egg groups. We can breed with any other dragon egg group Pokemon. And then once you've got your good male Ekans, breed that good male Ekans with a female 
Gyarados. Gyarados is also in the Dragon and Water 2 egg group. And when you and again as the same process, breed your good male Ekans with a female Gyarados that you caught, hopefully with 31 IVs or some 31 IVs, if not, it doesn't matter. But repeat this process again until you get yourselves a good IV Gyarados or Magikarp even, and then replace that with the Magikarp. Uh, which you could use a Magikarp or a Gyarados for this process for the female part, but I just put in a Gyarados since it's a little bit easy to understand, but but uh, use a magic carp just just in case. So scrub, scrub the Gyarados, just use a magic carp instead of the Gyarados. It's in the same egg group, so I have to just scrub out this for some reason. I'll put in Gyarados, but use a magic carp instead of the Gyarados. So male Enkins with female magic carp. Since magic carp is in the dragon and water 2 egg group, you can just keep breeding this. Um, just keep swapping out the magic carp, which is a female for better female magic carps until you get like a really good IV one, like five times fate one. And start using the Destiny Knot to make sure that you're always passing down better IVs. And eventually, you'll come across a 6x31, which will be great. But make sure that you, once you've done with this, that you get yourselves a really good magic harp that is male. Because then, like, like I said, you want, you want yourself like a... At the end of this little chain, you have yourself a good Lucario, which is male. A good Ekans, which is male. A good Magikarp, which is male, which you can evolve into a Gyarados if you want. It doesn't really matter since it doesn't change egg groups. Or just just remember that some specific evolutions, I believe, can change egg groups. So just be wary of that. So like, now that we've done those three Pokemon, we're going to go on to the next little chain, which is with the same male Lucario and a female Rhyhorn. So you're going to catch yourself a female Rhyhorn, and you're going to breed it with your really good male Lucario that you've had with, hopefully... 5 or 6 times 31 guaranteed IVs. So then what you're going to do is repeat this process again. You're going to keep breeding for female Rhyhorns and if they're better than the one that you have in the daycare, which I would suggest probably screenshotting the IVs of all the Pokemon that you're breeding. Uh, once you keep breeding, keep keep breeding. If you get like eventually 4 times 5 times IVs, give it a... give uh, one of them a Destiny Knot. Then once you've done this, then try and breed for a male good Rhyhorn, or a, a male Rhyhorn with good IVs. Then once you've done that, that is it for that chain, because now Rhyhorn is in the field and monster egg group. Now you have one, now you have a good Pokemon for the monster egg group. Okay, then for the next little chain, and um, by the way, if you're wondering why we're doing this and we want males at the end of it, but we want females to the start of it, I'll get into that in, at the end of the video, since that's going to be the easiest to explain why. But for the next chain, we want to breed our male Lucario with a female Wooper that we just caught. Also done this, we want to repeat the process again. Keep hatching Wooper eggs, keep swapping out the female Wooper parents with the new fem uh, female Woopers that you caught. Keep repeating this process until you get good IVs, then give one of the parents a Destiny Knot, then start breeding for a male Wooper with good IVs. Once you've got one, we can move on to the next Pokemon. Use your male new Wooper, your new male Wooper with a female Shellos. Then repeat this process again, keep breeding eggs for female Shellosses, uh, swap out the female Shellos in the daycare with better female Shellosses, and keep going until you get the good IVs, then give them, give one of them the Destiny Knot, then try and go for a male Shellos. This is because Wooper is in the field and water, one, which is why it can be do Lucario, and Shellos is in the water one and Amorphous, or Amorphous, egg group. And once you've done that, you'll have, you have yourself a male Shellos that has really good IVs, after that, that is that little chain done. We can go into the fourth chain for Lucario, and this is actually the final one for Lucario. So we want to breed your male Lucario with a female Cacnea, which is in field and the grass egg mo no, egg, not egg moves, egg groups. Uh, again, so good your good male Lucario with your female Cacnea that you just caught. Keep breeding until keep breeding Cacnea eggs. Since obviously your Cacnea is female, you're going to pass down the female version of the eggs every single time. Until you get a good female Cacnea in the daycare, then give one of them the Destiny Knot. And then try and breed for a male Cacnea that has really, really good IVs. Once you've done that, then we can move on to the Togetic, or the Togekiss, depending on which one you have. It doesn't matter as long as you have one of them with that is male and has good IVs. So then once you've done that, breed your male Togetic, or Togetis. Togekiss. I'm going to say Togekiss, but breed your good 
male Tokatik with a female Snow Runt. Uh, this is because Tokatik is in the Fairy and Flying Egg group and Snow Runt is in the Fairy and Mineral Egg group. So once we've done this, uh, again, repeat the process. Female Snow Runt is in the Decker. You're breeding for female Snow Runt still until you get a good IV female Snow Runt. Then give one of them the Destiny Knots, which then will breed you hopefully a good male with I a male snow runt with good IVs, and once you've done that, take your male snow runt, which is in the fairy and mineral egg group, and breed it with a female dwebble. Dwebble is in the mineral and bug egg group. And once you have started this, repeat the process again. Breed for female dwebbles, replace the parent in the daycare with female dwebbles until you get better IVs, better IVs, better IVs. When you get like four, five, six times 31 IVs, um, give one of the parents a, a destiny knot, then start going for a male dwebble with good IVs. Once you've done this, pull in the PC, we can move on to our next little chain, which is finally male Tokatik with a female Archon. Uh, like I said, Tokatik is in the fairy and flying a group, whereas Archon is in the flying and water free. I don't know why it's in the water free a group, but it is, so we're just going to use it. So, like I said, again, Tokatik male has already got good IVs. We're breeding with a new fresh got Archon, which might have bad IVs. So we're going to keep breeding male Archons until we get a good Archon, which we're going to keep replacing every single time we get a better one than the current male, the current female Archon in the daycare. We're going to keep replacing it until we get a good female Archon with good IVs. Then we're going to give one of the parents a Destiny Knot. Then we're going to breed until we get a male Archon with good IVs. And once we have done this, then you have finally completed the chain. Now the reason, and that's actually a long part of the video, but the reason why we want this chain, because now we have every single egg group accomplished, and we can now use these, these, this list of Pokemon we got as our IV Pokemon to breed for better, for good IVs on other Pokemon. The reason why we started off with female Pokemon that we freshly caught, and then ended with male Pokemon while breeding, so it's because we wanted every single one of these Pokemon to be male to always be good. The reason why is because if you use a f if you use a female Pokemon, so for example, I can quickly give you the fact that let's uh, let's use what's what's a good example actually. I need to find actually I need to find a quick egg group. So I'm gonna actually gonna quickly look up. Let's look up um Cacnea. So Cacnea. So Cacnea, like I said, is going to be bred with a male Lucario as a, and the Cacnea is going to be female. We're going to keep breeding until we get a good female Cacnea, put that into the daycare, and then try and get a good male Cacnea. The reason why we want this is because if we go into the grass, yeah, the grass egg group, um, then we are going to be using ourselves any of the any of these Pokemon. So for example, I'll use a Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur is in the grass and monster egg group so then then we can use this male cacnea that we have that has really really good ivs and we can repeat this process again with a female bulbasaur so we can get ourselves a pvp ready bulbasaur which can be a venusaur or a mega venusaur with just that cacnea and this cacnea then also can breed with any other pokemon that is in the grass egg group I think on this list I put down the Cacnea's in the field grass, it's technically in the human-like, I accidentally put human-like, so sorry about that, but that's pretty, I think that's the only one that I got confused with, but that means then we can just use that, and then every single egg group, so I would definitely suggest looking at the egg groups and seeing what Pokemon are in these, and then listing them up with these these Pokemon that I told you to go get, and then continue and get yourselves every single Pokemon with good IVs. But anyway, I think that is all for this video, hopefully you guys enjoyed, if you did make sure to leave a comment to see more Pokemon Brick Brawls that gives a Roblox. Like I said, this is a very confusing guide because I have no idea how I can make this less complicated. But like I said, you have any suggestion, any questions I should say, any questions because this is very confusing, make sure to leave a comment down below. I'll try and get to you ASAP and make sure to try and answer your, your comments. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed and like always, I'll see you guys next time.